without wasting much time, as we bring the vessel of God to the podium, let's put our hands as we welcome Reverend Doctor Charles Apoko. My father, my father, touch your feet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, can you stretch your right hand in my direction? Just your right hand and join your feet with mine and say with me, Lord Jesus, anoint your servant to preach your word with simplicity, with sincerity, with soundness of doctrine. Anoint your servant to preach your word with power. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, circumcise my ears, circumcise my ears and, fertilize my heart, and fertilize my heart that the words I will hear, that the words I will, hear will, give me grace, will give me grace and ability, and ability to, dominate, to dominate in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I want to thank God for your senior pastor here. I want to salute his faith. He's a strong faith in God. He doesn't see the impossible. By the time he invited me when I was coming to Australia, um, the Australian government just placed an embargo on visas for Nigerians and some West African countries because of uh, Ebola. And I told him that, he told me that our case is different. And I did apply for the visa. And um, surprisingly, you know, they didn't ask me any questions. They didn't call any person. And they just informed me that the visa was ready. Um, I have three children in Europe. I have a son who is a doctor in Germany. I have an engineer who is also in uh, Romania, and I have a last child there. And I just finished paying school fees and several other things, and uh, I didn't have money in the account. And the ticket to this place is about $3,000. Over. Over. And after 30 minutes that the alert, the email came, number one, my email was not functioning. A day before the uh, letter came, my email started functioning. <laughs> and um, 30 minutes after the email came, I received an alert from somebody who was owing me about uh, $7,000. And he paid in the over $3,000 that I needed to buy the ticket with. So I bought the ticket. And here I am. Amen. For those of you who are from Africa, I salute your courage for coming to this part of the world. Amen. It's not an easy trip. It requires somebody. I was just reminded that Australians must be traveling a lot. <laughs> How long is it from here to from Melbourne to this by road? To 10 hours. Everything is in 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours. <laughs> I bring you greetings from Nigeria, the best country to be born. I love my country. I bring you greetings from my wife. Uh, by December this year, we'll be married for 30 years. My wife is a, my wife is a nurse midwife by training. I'm a doctor by training. And today we run a school. We have a big school. And then uh, we just bought property, 25 acres, we want to open a polytechnic. And I'm a general polytechnic. I'm so glad to belong to the Church of God mission. That's where I was raised. We were raised by Bishop Edo Hassim. And uh, the, the skills we acquired there, the knowledge of God we acquired there, have uh, helped us to become who we are today. We're looking at Grace for dominion. 
One of the things about the Christian faith is that what you don't understand cannot make meaning to you. The Bible says that when the sower went to sow, that the seeds that fell on the roadside were like those who heard the word of God, but they did not understand. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You don't become a medical doctor by falling under the anointing. You become a medical doctor by training and by understanding. Are we following answers? Yes, sir. The Bible says that by wisdom is a house built. There are built houses, built homes. Like, I am building my family. I want to have an, a global family. I want to have grandchildren all over the world. I, 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 am, I am living a life that no man intimidates me. Are you, are you following ourselves here? Yes, sir. And it takes wisdom to build it. The second thing is that by understanding it is established. Australia is an established nation, but many African nations are not established because our leadership in Africa lack understanding. It's not the devil. The devil is not the problem of Africa. The problem of Africa is understanding. I was telling somebody as we are coming that we should not have sent our white people away from Nigeria. We should have integrated with them and learned from them to build our nations. What somebody understands that you don't understand is a mystery to you. If you can't operate this phone, if it is in your hand, it is useless. Instead, it is this phone that is having dominion over you. So it is, <laughs> you own a car or you own a bank account and you can't sign, you don't know how to operate it, particularly in this digital age, then you are virtually useless. Are we, are we right? Yes. Then the next thing is, is through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and precious ornaments. So you can be big and be empty. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. I've been to Madagascar. It's the fourth largest island in the world. I go there annually to run developmental seminars like this. But it's virtually empty. When I came to the airport in Melbourne, and they, they saw my passport as a Nigerian and as a black man, the natural tendency is to be suspicious of you. And... As I was approaching the airport, the Lord spoke to me that you are not a Nigerian, you are a citizen of heaven. And heaven is greater than Australia. So I was approaching the, the, the checkpoint with the mentality of a heavenly citizen. Don't look at me like that. Are you here? Are you here with me? Because what I'm saying is God told me that a lot of you have a refugee mentality. Those of you who are black here, you have a refugee mindset. I talk very bluntly. I came with enough money. I have enough money to feed myself, stay in the hotel if he gets angry with me. <laughs> and if you two get angry with me, I didn't come here for your offerings. I came with enough money. I came here to change your lives. Um, by any standard globally, I'm a rich man. By any standard global, American, my classmates are professors in America. They are professors in Europe. But none of them can intimidate me with money. I make a lot of money in Nigeria. And so as I was approaching, it was a contest between my mind and the person going to interact with me. And that is what happens between you every day and your society and the world. As you approach people, they have a label of who you are. They have a perception of who you are. As you walk in the streets of Australia, there is the perception, if your color is black, that you are here parasitically. <laughs> that you are coming to eat their wealth. I came here to change your mindset. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Until you come I, I will share this, I will share these things with, I will go into deeper rings as I go along. Today, I'm just defining your identity. 
As I got to her, she asked me, how are you? I said, fine. Where are you from? I said, I'm from Nigeria. With a smile, not with a frown. I'm not running away from home. <laughs> and she asked me, what do you do? I said, I'm a doctor. I come from a medical family. My son is also a doctor. What, what, what was I doing? I was trying to place her properly. I was trying to define myself. And the Spirit of God told me that I must take charge of the interview. That if I allow her to be interviewing me, that she will overwhelm me. But, you see, dominion is a conscious thought process. You must, you must understand this, brethren. You must understand this. True knowledge. And she asked me, what are you here to do? I said, I came for capacity building. She said, what? <laughs> Okay. That means for me to be coming for capacity building, that means I'm already built. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I want you to have a mindset. Out. Because if an American enters anywhere, if the way I was moving with a swag, yes. they were thinking I was an American. <laughs> say, are you an American? They said, no, I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> well, my home woman said, I like your shoe. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody else? I'm just starting with you. Then she said, what's the relationship between church and capacity building? I said, you know that um, the Sunday school was introduced by a Christian in Europe, and then because of the introduction of the Sunday school, children started to go to school on the Sabbath, and because of that, Europe was developed educationally. I said, you mean? I said, yes. I said, the church is an amalgam, and it has to come in with several things to build the society. Then he said, what's his relationship between fasting and capacity building? I told her, have you heard of electromotive force? She said, yes. I told her, electricity only flows from a higher potential to a lower potential. And that fasting humbles you. And by humbling you, you put yourself in a lower potential that God can flow into you. She said, that's good, that's true. I said, Madam, they pay to listen to me in Nigeria. And she said, I will have been ready to pay to listen to you. Have a good stay in Australia. <laughs> somebody said, Dominion. Stand up, just stand up, stand up. Tell somebody, don't look at me like that. I'm more than what you are seeing. I know who I am. Tell somebody, I'm not living according to your impression. I am a citizen of heaven. I'm not hearing an amen in this place. Yeah. I, I, are you allowed to make some noise in Australia? Yes, <laughs> because I see, I, I see people with a, with a frown as I've been coming. Everybody. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Please be seated. What is grace? Grace is divine impute of divinity into humanity to function beyond installed capacity. Did you hear me well? No, sir. <laughs> English is too much. <laughs> I, 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 I hope you can type here. You can write. Too fast? Just listen to me. If you don't learn these things, we are, we are not here just to pray and fall. Grace Grace is the divine impute of divinity, that's God, into humanity to make you function beyond its tall capacity. This phone has a memory card. The memory card has a certain amount of gigabytes it can contain. But if you connect a, a, another facility to it that will enable it to store more data then it is functioning beyond installed capacity. If Samson was a huge man, it was Jesus that was huge. Samson was small. Hello? Samson was small. You know why? If he was a huge man, they didn't need to ask him the secret of his strength. Have you, have you ever thought of that? If something was huge, they didn't need to ask for the secret of his strength. 
Hello? Yeah. If you can't, if that will distract us, concentrate here. I'm a mobile encyclopedia, just relax. <laughs> Madam, if Samson had a huge structure, nobody needed to ask him the secret of his strength. If it was his structure that was the secret of his strength, then he wouldn't have failed. But the Bible says when the Spirit of God comes upon him, so it is the grace is an impute into you that makes you function beyond the capacity, the natural human capacity. And until that impute is in you, you will be evaluated by your education, you'll be evaluated by your work, you'll be evaluated by your race, you'll be evaluated by your family, your family background. Yes, sir. But when grace, I, I had the least grade in English in my school, when I was leaving school. I had a very bad handwriting that the love letters I wrote to my wife, I have copies. Now when I want to read them, it's, I have copies, anniversary, I refresh them. I can't read what I wrote to my wife. How did she agree to marry me? It was grace. <laughs> I write with capital letters. I write with capital letters. Because if I write with small letters, I can't read what I've written. But I'm a doctor. So it is not what you don't have that matters. It is the God you have that matters. Are you listening to me? No, you are still where you are. I came in, in, in Nigeria when you want to dress a, a lady's hair, you do what is called washing and setting. I'm doing washing and setting for your, your, your mentality now to redesign it. For those of you who have left Africa here, your life will not change until your mentality changes. Yes, sir. You can come to Australia and still remain in Nigeria. Yes. Because if you take a goat from Canada to Australia, it's still a goat. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. There are Australians who are white people who are poorer than Nigerians. So it's not their color, it's their mindset. If a Chinese man comes to your nation, he takes over your economy. It's the mindset. And please listen, forget about the miracles. Only one idea changes your destiny. So what skills did you come to this country with? Or what skills do you have as a white person? Those skills are not going to be enough. I get paid more than the average professor in Nigeria. I, I get paid more than the average doctor in America. Living in Africa. I live in Africa. I get paid more than what people in America live off of. Because of the impute. Just ideas, infusions. If you, are, if you are anemic, if your blood is low, they transfuse you. Am I right? Yes, sir. Are, are you listening to me? Sure, sir. So, grace is that transfusion, that induction, that endowment, that impute into you. It will surprise you that I lecture bishops. He knows my history. I was teaching pastors. I teach Anglican bishops. But I've never been to a Bible school till today. When the bishop saw my functionality, he had to ordain me so that the pastors could, I could have authority. That's right. Put your hands together. Grace is when a small, when a motorbike, you see a motorbike pulling a tractor, the motorbike is functioning beyond installed capacity. And I will tell you how this grace came about. The next thing is divine impute for comparative advantage. Malthus' theory in economics says that nations and individuals should function in their areas of comparative advantage. Grace is that thing that God puts in you that is not in this person. 
that makes you function in a unique way different from this person. And this person functions in a unique way different from you so that there will be no jealousy. No person can complete. It's camera. You know it's camera. It's torture. You know torture. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know it's torture. It's camera. Doctor, ah, 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 poking. Eh? A stammerer or a stutterer cannot be an announcer. He cannot be a hawker. Uh, in Africa, we hawk. Come and buy plantain. Or uh, in Africa, we have bus conductors. Oh, shoddy, oh, shoddy, oh, shoddy. A stammerer cannot say, oh, 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 shoddy. The bus will have passed before the passengers will hear what he's saying. <laughs> Is that true? Come yes. on. Do you know that when a stammerer is singing, he doesn't stammer? Yes. 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 There's a movie called The King's Speech. Yes, yes. Where that happened. Where yes. The, 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 the King of England, yep. somebody from Australia, yep. trained him how to speak. For singing. You see, when you sing as a stammerer, you don't stutter. You don't stammer. Because there is that grace in him to worship. Stand up, please stand up. Tell somebody, say, don't look at me like that. If you are taller than me, I'm shorter than you. If you are fairer than me, I'm darker than you. If you are fatter than me, I'm thinner than you. If you are more handsome than me, I'm uglier than you. Better than me in all aspects. <laughs> Are we still together here? Are you learning about grace? There's a comparative advantage. You see? And listen, 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 please sit down. When you are con you might know how to cook very well. She might know how to sew very well. She might know how to weave very well. God has distributed these different graces so that each of us will learn how to appreciate him and learn how to build on our graces. You don't understand me. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Coco doesn't grow in Switzerland. <laughs> But the production of chocolate is in Switzerland. Yes. So, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Brazil, Nigeria, they have a comparative advantage, a grace of cocoa. Then Switzerland, United States, or wherever they produce chocolate, Switzerland, uh, they have the grace of production. But the problem with the black man is that we don't have enough grace to produce. We are more of consumers. I can say this. Somebody else can tell you this truth. When I want to talk about economic dominance, one of these days, we'll come to, I'll come to share with you how you can be rich, what has made me rich. So, what is it that you have that I don't have? What is it that she knows that you don't know? I, I got to preach in a place uh, uh, for one of my friends, Chidi Okorafo. He will preach and preach and preach and people will start crying. But when I come, I make them laugh. <laughs> and so, he can't overwhelm me. <laughs> are, are, you, are you with me here? The problem that society has done is that society has set some standards that is used to measure every person. I measure myself by my own standards. If you keep allowing society to determine your level of excellence and how you should excel, you will never dominate them. It requires a contrarian. Contrarian means a, a, a thinking that comes from the other direction. You must think differently. 
and it's that what is not identified, whose value is not identified will be abused. If I don't identify the purpose and the value of the microphone, I will abuse it. I will use it to drum. I will use it to pound. The reason most of you have not done well in life is that you, 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 you compare yourselves with people that are not your standards. Oh, you must be a slim lady before you are beautiful, no? And so, we're going to be asking God, what areas in my life do I have a comparative advantage? The day you find it, brethren, no man can match up with you. The next thing is the, 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 the a grace is the presence of God in you that creates the difference. Moses told God that if you will not go with me, with us, how will men know that we are different? Grace is the presence of God. When, when that tree that Moses saw that was burning with fire and was not consumed, Moses was seeing other trees. Do you understand me? No? Do you understand me? You understand? Yes. Moses was seeing other trees. But what attracted him was a tree that had a radiance, a luminance, a glow, and was not consumed. What you need is not really prayers. What you need is not really money. What you need is not really healing. What you need is the presence of God. Oh, amen. But listen, listen, no, you don't understand. Not doing it by himself. Listen, listen. If Barack Obama is to visit this church, this environment will change. This is a black Kenya with ears like satellite dish. <laughs> we'll come to that later. But it's the American president. Two weeks before he will come here, the, the CIA and all the agencies of America will be in this town. They will virtually seize this town. Am I talking to someone? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Your movement will be curtailed because Barack has come. The car, the car he will drive, he will bring it. The food he will eat, he will bring it. The water he will drink, he will bring it. The plane it will enter, will come. So, when Barack comes into this environment, even if the Australian president has been coming here, prime minister has been coming here, the coming of Barack Obama creates a difference. Yeah. Are you, am I right? Yes. Now, let me give you another example. Listen very carefully. Do you know mad men, mad people have grace? Yeah. You are from Africa. Yeah. Have you seen a madman with malaria? <laughs> Have you seen a lazy madman before? There's no lazy mad person. Even in old age, you'll see a mad person. <laughs> Have you seen a mad woman that is pregnant? Yes. yes. How does she go into labor without antenatal care? Have you seen a mad woman in labor? Where is the midwife? Have you ever seen a mad woman that had cesarean section to, be, to deliver? No. no. Yes. So if madness, the devil in an individual, you know, some of the villages you come from, there are mad people who have been there years back and they are still alive and old. Mad people don't cough. Mad people don't have diarrhea. They eat from the dustbin. But you drink bottled water, as good as Australian water is, you drink bottled water, and you still fall sick. If the presence of madness can create a difference in a mad person, oh, God. The, pre <laughs> the 
the presence of God in you should create a difference. Are, are you are you are you understanding me? Why Joseph was able to dominate when he entered Potiphar's house, the vegetables in the farm started undergoing chromosomal engineering. They 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 became DMO, divinely modified organisms. <laughs> You are not schooled in Australia. I don't know. You, don't make you, you are not properly schooled in Australia. <laughs> you, not... <laughs> you don't seem to understand this man from Africa. <laughs> you have GMO, but you also have DMO. The flock of Laban, when the presence of God in Jacob came in contact with them during meeting. There was DMO. Yeah. Now listen carefully. I am AS. My wife is AS. We don't have sickness. There's a disease in Africa called sickle cell anemia. If you are AS and AS, you marry. There's 25 percent possibility you have sickness. I am AS. My wife is AS, but genetics was suspended. I don't have sickness. What heals cancer is the presence of God. What heals diabetes is the presence of God. It's not the guest preacher. He's the one that makes the difference. Anywhere Joseph entered, there was a change. It was because he moved with the presence of God. Oh my God, thank God I'm Joseph. And <laughs> listen, until you move with this consciousness, you can never dominate. Yes, sir. Are you still with me here? Yes, sir. So grace is the presence that makes the difference. The presence of God in you that makes the difference. Now, grace. It's the presence of God in you that make people question you. How manage? How did you accomplish this? Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose brothers we know and the sisters are with us? How did he come to acquire this knowledge? Brethren, listen. Until people question your achievement, you are not dealing with grace. Thank you, Jesus. You are dealing with effort. Thank you, Jesus. What you can achieve with your degree is not grace. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Now I want to I want to make you know one thing. When two times two is not equal to four, two multiplied by two. Is supposed to be equal to four. When two multiplied by two becomes more than four, know that grace is at work. Did you hear me well, sir? You heard me well? Yes, sir. I slept in somebody's house a few days back. Just sleeping in his house, agreeing to sleep in his house. You know, I'm not, he even put me in a hotel. That's a big house. He put me in a hotel. To sleep. Just sleeping in his house, he gave me three thousand five hundred dollars. Michael, how many days will it take you to walk that in Australia? Grace. <laughs> that one is the <laughs> Just six weeks. <laughs> six weeks. Somebody raised up and said, "Jehovah, I need grace." God, I need grace. Jehovah, I need grace. Those of you who are Africans, you say. God, I didn't come here to walk. God, I didn't come here to walk. <laughs> I, need I need grace. Because I hear Africans in Europe talk about job, 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 job. Are you a slave? Job, 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 job. My friends that went to America, went to America with their wives, they are now divorced. Job, 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 job. My son went to America to work. He became, my son became a millionaire at 22. 
He had his own company while in the university. But he just wanted to go to America to work as he's well, as he, as he doing his master's in Europe. What, 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 what kind of life is that? How long will you live? And I came here to prophesy upon you that the mentality of work is over. Somebody say amen. amen. Now listen, let me tell you why grace is coming. You see this suit I'm wearing? A young man gave me 19 pieces of this suit. Let me tell you about grace. Everything I'm wearing apart from this tie, I didn't buy. So I'm clothed by grace. It's possible that God will clothe you with glory. Why, why did a donkey entering Jerusalem have people place cloth on the ground for him to step on? Donkey. Grace, the presence of Christ on a donkey. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Ma, a donkey. Imagine a donkey coming and you remove your dress. Just put your dress. They were not Africans. So you might say that their clothes are old. This year, Jewish people. <laughs> My sister, I have stopped laboring. I work more than many, most of you here, but I work on that grace. This young man, by the, after he gave me this suit, I prayed for him in Ariaria Aria Market. He sold 1,200 pieces the same day. There was commotion in the market. This young man, after he gave up me this suit. He was in uh, Somebody was laughing and making money. Some two Nigerians went to China and were discussing. discussing and they were laughing. And the Chinese woman asked them, what are you discussing? Oh, they said it's Dobitex. That the way he sells his things, they wonder how he manages to sell. And the woman said, so he sells a lot? He said, yes. He said, okay. The woman called Dobitex. Dobitex, I hear that you sell a lot. He said, yes, I sell a lot. He said, I'm going to send you one container. Sell, return my money. That container is about $250,000 of clothes. The woman called again, I'm sending five. In one year, the woman sent 24 containers. The boy did not invest his money. He sold them, returned the money. And then he made his profit. He built a house, five floors, with ten flats in ten months. You know his qualification? Primary six. I don't know what you call that in Africa. Six. Primary six. six. Yes, six. Yes. But you know his wife? His wife has a master's degree. Grace. Primary six, marrying master's. That's Grace. <laughs> Tell anybody, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> what I'm going to become, <laughs> it's not going to be according to your evaluation. <laughs> it's not according to your impression. It's, it's by grace. It's by grace. Jesus. Israel is 0.05% of the total land mass of the Middle East. But the whole Arab nations and their wealth and their military cannot overwhelm Israel. And their God is our God. Are you listening to me here? Yes, sir. Your, your minds are still far from me. I have never done anything that I was qualified for. Once I put my step, grace comes. I went to university without an admission letter. By the time I got there, I found out that my name was on the list. Somebody did not type it. Grace is what removes disgrace from your life. Disgrace is the absence of grace. Disappear. The person is no longer appearing. So disgrace is 
deleting grace. Do you want your family to celebrate you? Yes, sir. Do you want Australia to celebrate you? Yes, sir. Do you want to be different? Yes, Do you want somebody to ask you how many? Yes, yes, yes. Those of you who are Africans, yeah, let me share this with you. It will be terrible if you get to your countries and the people you left behind are greater than you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're from Liberia. From Sierra I was in Sierra Leone recently. That's um, before Ebola. I was in Sierra Leone. I was in Makini. Oh. I went from Bo by road to free to Liberia to Monrovia. Oh, yeah. I to the house I slept, madam. That the man gave me three thousand five hundred dollars. Some time passed. This boy couldn't pay school fees in secondary school. He had only secondary school grade, but he employs white people in Africa. That's grace. When Oyedepo came, David Oyedepo, the ten richest pastors in the world, five are Nigerians. That's right. The ten richest pastors in the world, five are Nigerians. Five are Nigerians. When David Oyedepo came for our convention in Benin, it was a white pilot that flew him, black man. It was an albino. You, you know albino? You know albino? Albino. Those fair white black Africans. <laughs> it wasn't an albino, it was a European. That flew a black apple oh, in him. I tell you that. Please. No. I, I want to I go to Brisbane. People are not understanding me. <laughs> Grace is when nursery kindergarten children carry a trailer on their shoulders. Mm. Mm. When ants push elephants. Oh, what is dominion? Dominion is to rule over. Somebody say rule over. Rule over. Say it again. Rule over. Say it again. Rule over. Dominion is to control. Somebody say control. Control. Dominion is to exercise authority. Somebody say authority. Authority. Say it again. Authority. This place is very far from Britain. <laughs> very far. People were living here before the British came. Huh? Yes. But when they came, they ruled over. The aborigines were here. In America, before Christopher Columbus got there, there were people. Am I right? Yes, sir. St. Charles, there were people in St. Charles. Am I right? Yes, sir. The island of Madagascar had black Africans mm -hmm. until the people from Indonesia came there. Listen, what? There is something that is in the hand of another person. There is a position somebody is occupying. Yes. There is a certificate you need to get that is vacant in the vice chancellor's office. Yes. You need to walk into it. Yes. <laughs> My father didn't buy one plot of land. My father didn't buy one meter square. But I told myself, I, I should have been taller than this. It's poverty. <laughs> I should have been more handsome than this. You see, when you cry every morning, your face will be the muscles will change. <laughs> you need to see my kids. My kids are beautiful. Even the boys are beautiful. My palm. It looks like the back of a crocodile. <laughs> Turn it so that I don't peel. I don't peel your skin. I look like sandpaper. <laughs> Let me 
Let me see whether your hands are red. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I hawked firewood to get money to eat. The load on the firewood on my head when I was growing made me short. I should have been taller than I went for my son's graduation in Europe, medical school. I was the only black man in the hall. When they called my son, Dr. Miracle Apoki, my son came up among white children. And I remembered when we used to go and cut firewood in the, in the forest, in the creeks of the Niger Delta, it will rain. When it rains, I will catch cold. I would tell my mother, Mama, cold. Mama would tell me, cross your legs. You won't understand this because you have never felt it. <laughs> and I would cross my legs. She would say, urinate on your body. I will now wee on my body and the wee will keep me warm. But my son did not experience that. He is there because of my grace. The problem with you, the problem with the African mindset, we are very religious for stupid. Don't look at me like that, you can't do me anything. <laughs> the problem with the African mindset is that they transfer responsibility to God and to the devil. What the white man does not pray for, the black man still prays for it. You don't pray for streets to be clean. You clean them. You don't pray to be rich. You step into wealth. You activate wealth. I will teach you about how to be wealthy. Because I've experienced it. Mom, my father was a gates man in a hotel. Huh? My father was a gate man in the hotel, security man. Recently, I was taken to that same hotel. I want to make a point. Where my, that's some three years or four years back, where my father, the same hotel where my father was a gate man. They were carrying me in a convoy of cars to the same hotel. I entered that hotel and they put me in a suite, two toilets, two bathrooms and all this stuff. And I remember that my father used to answer yes sir there. Yes, so I called the manager. He said yes sir. Yes. I called security. said yes sir. I made sure I called all the departments for them to oh, answer yes. me yes. yes you know why I was calling them? The, 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 the yes sir, yes sir, my father answered. Let them answer it in return. Yes. Brethren, there is a man. <laughs> Am I? If I don't see faith in you, I won't lay hands on any person. Yes. Because you don't roast a wet goat. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes. In the midst of poverty and illiteracy and deprivation, I made up my mind that this is not where I am supposed to be. Yes, sir. There is a place I'm supposed to step into. Oh, you see, grace is activated by everyone. <laughs> where, where are you from? <laughs> Liberia. <laughs> you're coming, you're stepping in there. <laughs> He, he left there yeah. because he wants it. That's right. Your husband married you because he wanted you. Mm. There was a man in Kenya, his name is Nganga Marogwe. In the year 2000, and uh, I'm still defining grace and dominion. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> <He's awesome. laughs> in the year 2004, I was in Kenya. He, he, this man said, I fought in the Mao Mao War with Jomo Kayenta, and I did not amount to anything because I'm an illiterate. He said, I must read my Bible before I die. At the age of 81, 
he registered in primary one. By just registering in primary one, his name entered the Guinness Book of Records as the oldest primary one boy. <laughs> he became the senior prefect of the school because he was older than the commissioner for education. In 2005, Nganga Maragwe was in the United Nations to address the United Nations without contesting elections. Somebody stand up and shout, Chris! If you are living in one room, you would think you have property. Living in Australia is not a big deal. Yes, sir. That's why I see. It's the outcome. Mm. Being an Australian is not a big deal. It's the outcome of your stay here. Life is a blank check. Mm. Right on it, God is ready to cash it. Okay, let me tell you who you are. <laughs> oh, Dr. Koki, you have come. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just say one thing. Let me say one thing, then we'll, we'll, we'll continue tomorrow. Are you blessed? Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God said, be fruitful, have dominion. Is that true? Yes. Uh, am I right? Uh, 26. Okay. That means it is an order. It's not optional. To have dominion is not optional. It's a command. If you are not dominating, you are a sinner. <laughs> the Bible if you are not dominating, you are a sinner. Thank you, sir. Because if God said, have dominion, you refuse to have dominion. If he created you in his image and likeness and he has dominion, and you are not having dominion, something is wrong with you. Yes, yes. Now, let me say this, then we will pray and we will go. Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 5 to 10. Now, look up. Look up. Before I formed thee, not before your father married your mother. You are not a product of your father and your mother. Yes, sir. You are an idea of God. Ma'am, are you with me here? Are you, are you? Before he found thee in your mother's womb, he knew you. Yes. It was his point. It's plan. He has a record of you. Yes. He, he, he has you. You are his concept. And set you apart. Let me tell you something. Now, the day your father ejaculated you, 250 million stem cells were produced. And only it's like the population of America lining up. <laughs> America was 250 million 10 years back. It's like the population of America lining up. And they said, on your marks, get set, go. And you came first. You dominated. You dominated 200. And... No, no, no. I said you're not. I'm telling you that you're not properly schooled. You didn't go to good school, man. <laughs> You dominated, I'm sitting down, you dominated 215 million human beings. How many people are in Australia? <laughs> Ma'am, you dominated 250 million human beings. 
You know why I respect my wife? Huh? You know why I respect my wife? Please stand up. You are XX chromosome. That's in your genes. X chromosome from your mother, X from your father. Is that okay? I am XY. The day your father produced you, Y chromosomes were produced. That's true. I see people didn't go to school here, you're disturbing me. <laughs> yeah, from here, Ghana, Liberia. <laughs> go behind, go behind. <laughs> Your father produced you as stem cell. There were your brothers who were supposed to be produced. There were white chromosomes produced by your father. But you were better than them. You came first. I can just, can, can you have some swag, man? <laughs> There is no Liberian man better than you, including George Weir. Because the day, no, you don't receive it, you are it. You don't receive, I don't receive being, I receive being a doctor, a degree. But I don't receive being a man. I'm a man. That's, that's, that's where I'm going to. I don't receive, I received being a doctor. I received this microphone, but my voice is me. You are a dominator. It's intrinsic in your creation. That's the way you were packing. Don't say I received, I realize it. I realize it. You, you, you don't pray to hot bread you, when you are a bakery owner. <laughs> what most of you are praying for are the things you are, that's the beginning of sin. He said uh, you will be like God. But he created them in his image and likeness already. Now let me tell you, once you have this mindset, nothing stops you. No man intimidates you. No man. And I'm a different African. Say, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Say, do not no longer be conformed. Amen. Now listen very carefully. The day your father deposited in your mother's cervix, that's the neck of the womb, and you swam from the cervix to the fallopian tube to fertilize your mother's egg, by mathematical extrapolation, any scientist that is not a Christian is a fool. <laughs> By mathematical extrapolation, if we expand the size of the stem cell to your size and expand the distance, that same multiplication, the distance from the cervix to the fallopian tube is like a man swimming from Liberia to New York. <laughs> Where are you from? Liberia. Liberia. We are going to liberate you. Amen. I told them in Liberia that you can, your currency can be the liberty and you are still a slave. <laughs> Firestone took all your land to produce rubber and you don't produce eraser in Liberia. That you left America to possess. Firestone, one family took all your land to plant rubber. Your fathers are laboring for a family and you can't produce tube. We need grace. We need to go back for you to. You need, you need to leave Australia, go back home and produce tubes, tires. You don't come here to settle. You came here temporarily to be built up, to build your nations. You must have that mindset. You must have that mindset. We cannot undergo a second slavery. Are you getting angry? Yes. I want you to be angry, man. <laughs> For you, you have 
undergone greater journeys than coming to Laetus, Australia. Yes, sir. When you were not yet complete, the chromosomes of your mother had not joined you. You were able to overcome 250 million people. Why will you be a failure now? God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Come on, In the name of Jesus. You had no eyes. You had no eyes. You dominated. You, you dominated. My God. You had no legs, only a tail. You moved. You had no hands. Only a body. You reached your destination. How did you know your mother's head? When you had no eyes. Grace. You are packaged for greatness. And there's nothing that should stop you. Let's stand up to pray. I'm going to teach you how to pray. Because some of you pray foolish prayers. <laughs> Everybody worrying me fire. Everybody pursuing me thunder. <laughs> Find the devil, the devil. Ma'am, have you ever seen him? You, you have electricity transformers in this country? You have electricity transformers. I don't know whether Australians also go mad. Do they go mad here? Yeah. Some do. You don't have too much of them. No, no, no. no, 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 no. They are a place for them. Okay, let's come to. Okay, okay. You manage your, you manage your madness here. Well. Sierra Leone, did you ever see a madman in Wilberforce Town go and put his finger inside the transformer? No. 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 You are from Liberia too. No. 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 Have you seen a madman go and put his finger inside the transformer? No. no. Liberia too. Yeah. Have you seen a madman? In somethingville, put his hand inside transformer. Why? They know that. They know. They know the grace of transformer. That's why. <laughs> Even if it is off. Even when the transformer has no electricity, the madman fears it. So he said, "Which wizard? You are even in Australia. They are troubling you here. <laughs> Something wrong with you, man." <laughs> Did you carry them across the city to this place? Yeah. It's just... Uh, they are... Uh, it's, it, it's our mentality. Mentality! It's our mentality. It's for me, I think so. It's our mentality. You are going to pray. Every stupid idea... In the name of Jesus. ...that I got from my father, my mother, from university, from Africa, from Australia, remove it from my mind. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Every stupid idea. The spirit of inferiority. In the name of Jesus. Come on. 
You are going to pray. Every spirit of inferiority, I destroy you in my life. Every spirit of inferiority, of incompetence, of I am not good enough. Jesus. Amen. You're going to pray. God, I need your presence to make a difference in my life. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. I need your presence. I need your presence. I need your presence. I need your presence. I need your presence to make a difference. So that when I do a thing, somebody will ask me, what is your secret? Yes. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Did you know that? Yes. No, did you know that? Yes. Can it enter your brain? Yes. A Liberian went to Europe and became the European footballer. Who want to welcome the European footballer of the year is a black man. Not from Nigeria. That time Liberia was not a great footballing nation. Am I right? Yes, sir. The second do not need to be right before God can make you dominate. Imagine somebody, it is his mother that is from America and he is president of America. He cannot be president in Kenya. If Barack should contest elections in Kenya, he will not win. They will not even allow him to collect the form because they will say his, uh, 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 his mother, if you, if you change it around, they will say his mother is not from Kenya. Am, am I, are you following them? Yes, yes. But he won in America. Yes. Huh? Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Oh, you know I have no helper. Huh? You know I'm not too schooled. You know I'm a lady. Yes. You know my husband died during the war. You know I have a sick mother. I have this. But you have God. Things are changing. As you leave this hall with this mindset, favor will follow you. Extra capacity will follow you. Anything you do from today, you will do it with a difference. Every mentality that followed you from wherever, from your family, from your education, from your background, I change it in the name of Jesus. People will celebrate you. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. I came with some books and CDs. Where are they, Mama? I came with some books and CDs. 
There's a, there's a book there titled Managing Opportunities. There's a book there, Managing Opportunities. Maximizing Opportunities. Then, uh, okay. Then uh, there's a book um, the seed is you have one on the eagle. I will teach you about the eagle. The eagle is a bed of dominance. Then there is another one positioning for opportunities, uh, understanding marriage, and several CDs there. I did them in a hurry. I just labeled them, but they are powerful CDs. God will use them to bless you. Okay, so you manage them. Right, God. Are you blessed? Yes, yes. Somebody who did not come, what will you tell the person? 